Welcome to another edition of In the Studio at Inner Court Live, your weekly music news and information show featuring artist interviews, music videos, industry news and information with your hosts, Greg Pearson and Carl B. Phillips. You are now in the studio at Intercourt Live. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another edition of In the Studio at Intercourt Live. I'm Greg Pearson. And I'm Carl B. Phillips. And this is our weekly show airing every Monday night. Every. Every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard. Eastern Standard Time. Right here on the Inner Court TV YouTube channel. Inner Court TV YouTube channel. Inner Court TV YouTube channel. Bringing you the best in music, news, and entertainment. You can also watch us on Roku TV on the Right Now Praise channel. Or watch any of our past shows any anytime, 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 any past show, anytime. anytime. You, you just gives you a good reason to subscribe to our channel, so you can come and come back every week and watch us and like and also hit the notification, notification bell, so you won't miss a show. You do not want to miss a show because we always have great shows. Also, we like to know what you think of the show. We welcome your comments and your suggestions. So leave a comment below, right below. Yeah, type right in comment. Right below. Greg, what's going on with today's show? Oh man, we have award-winning gospel music artist, Dr. Ernest Pugh. Woo! Ernest Whew. Pugh, man. He's yes. going to be talking about, talking to us about his upcoming concert that is, that's going to be in Jackson, Michigan on April 9th. And we might even get him to sing a little bit. Just, yeah? just a little bit? Yeah. yeah Y'all want to hear this man sing. Trust me mm -hmm. on that one. The concert is sponsored by Youth for Global Health. We'll also be interviewing the sponsor of this concert, Dr. Cheryl Simmons, who is also the founder and CEO of Youth for Global Health. All righty. So call somebody, DM, whatever way you got to do it. Let them know that Intercourt Live is on the air. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Right back. Right back. Hello, I'm Carl B. Phillips, gospel recording artist, producer, songwriter, and consultant. And I'm Greg Pearson, recording studio owner, engineer, recording artist, songwriter, and producer. Greg, you know, over time we've run into a lot of people that are currently indie recording artists looking for ways to broaden their recording career. But what do you think they should do? You should get on the right road by attending Navigation, the Indie Artist Roadmap, a one-day workshop covering production, branding, radio servicing, publishing, and artist streams of income. Carl and I will be sharing our 50 years of experience in the gospel music industry, along with guest panelists, artist, manager, and music publisher, Courtney Benjamin, entertainment lawyer Howard Hertz, who's worked with some of the greatest in the industry. And Dallas Fraser, who is radio servicing promoter and host of the internationally syndicated radio show, Tony D's New Artist Profile. Navigation to Indie Artist Roadmap will be held on Saturday, April 23rd, 2022, right here at the MAG in Southfield, Michigan. This is a hybrid event with limited seating, plus you have the option of attending virtually. You can also register online for Navigation to Indie Artist Roadmap Workshop by going to provemeproductions.ticketlocity.com. If you are an indie recording artist or you have dreams of becoming a recording artist, you need to be at the Navigation the Indie Artist Roadmap Workshop on Saturday, April 23rd. Again, that's Saturday, April 23rd. I need you to go right now. Register provemeproductions.ticketlocity.com. Provemeproductions.ticketlocity.com. Greg, what do they need to do? Get, Get on, on the, the right, right road, road 
by attending Navigation, the Indie Artist Roadmap. Welcome back to uh, another edition of In the Studio at Inner Court Live. We are honored to be speaking with a legend in gospel music, legend. Dr. Ernest Pugh, a legend. Wow. <laughs> he is the Emmy Award winner, Dove, and multiple Stellar Award nominee, and three times number one Billboard artist who has released 12 gospel CDs to date. Dr. Pugh is coming to Jackson, Michigan in support of the Youth for Global Health and Social Justice Benefit Concert. Please welcome to In the Studio at Intercourt Live, Dr. In Ernest Pugh. God bless you. Hey, so happy to have you here, sir. It's an <laughs> honor to be here. God bless yeah. you. You are a 20-year veteran in the gospel music industry and a recipient of the prestigious BMI Award for Radio Airplay. How did you get your start in gospel music? Well, I started with, uh, actually, um, Eddie Pugh had a record company. It was a relative amount, of course, record company called God's Turn Record. So I did a debut, I did a, um, like a um, debut kind of, kind of said I kind of did a debut, but it was a demo tape. And that was in the 90s. But then around the 2005 era, I ran into a gentleman from Detroit called Brian Spears, Crystal Rose Records. Crystal Rose, yeah. He, Rose, uh, he yes. distributed my first record, which was a single. Uh, a re I, see, Detroit, I got so many connections to Detroit because <laughs> we did a Thomas Whitfield remake of Wrapped Up, Tied Up, Tangled Up. Ah, so okay. That kind of opened the eyes to me to then pivot over to Kerry Douglas, who picked me up in 2007, 2008 with Rain on us, and the rest is kind of history. Wow. Yeah, Kerry wow. Douglas. Kerry, Kerry Douglas, awesome uh, man of God who really knows how to get artists out there, get their names. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so he make you famous in all the earth. <laughs> <laughs> in addition to being in gospel music for 20 years, you also spent 20 years in the United States Army. Talk about what it was like once God told you to transfer from man's army to God's <laughs> army. <laughs> right, from the U.S. Army to the Army of the Lord. It, it was a hard decision to make, but uh, it had been prophesied to me for years and years and years. And um, I told God to really just give me a sign. I said, if you will make my demand for ministry much more than my demand is to to be on this this um, contract with the U.S. Army, um, I would be honored to serve, um, you know, the Lord with gladness and coming to his presence with singing. My wife was not having it. We had, my daughter was was three at the time and we still had pampers and and, 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 and formula to buy. So she was like, what is you gonna do? So I said, well, God, you gotta really do it so that I don't look like I'm crazy out here. And that's what he did. He created such a demand that my weekends were just so jam packed and even during the week, and uh, when the time come, one of the prophets that appeared to me when I was much younger came and said, God is going to give you a sign. I said, he already has. When I explained to him what it was, he said, well, what you waiting on? So mm. I did my paperwork and um, I took took the retirement and got out. Wow. So you were you were ministering both in the God's Army as well as the U.S. Army. Absolutely. I, I was just waiting to find out, is this what I'm going to do, you know, perpetually? be affiliated with the military or the government, you know, in some way, or will I get a chance to really operate uh, and do what God has put me in the earth to do, which was my passion. But I was always taught, you know, your, your vision is one thing, but you got to think about your provision as well when you're a family man. So. What advice would you give to an artist who is in a situation like you were 20 years ago? You know, you got a family to take care of, but God is saying, go out and, and do this. 
I would just say, you know, like the scripture says, make full proof of your ministry. And when you make full proof of your ministry, really make your contacts and your, your calling and your election for sure, uh, because you can know the voice of God unequivocally, just as much as you know that you male or female, you can differentiate and divide asunder the soul from the spirit. And you know, if your flesh is just tired of working or is God really giving you, you know, a mandate to really go into full-time ministry. So I just say, follow the signs, but always listen for the voice of God. And you have to drown out his voice because there's so many voices that are pulling on you. Uh, but you have to really, really listen for the voice of God, for the timing. Wow. Yeah, because you have so many uh, artists that go out there and think just because they get one record out there or one hit or whatever, and then they end up living pillar to post, and, <laughs> <laughs> as my mother would say. I like that. And, so true. Uh, so you also established a nonprofit organization, the Veterans Emergency Relief. Why did you establish that and what is, what's its purpose? Well, one of my final um, uh, assignments that I had when I was in the military is I was, a, I was an officer over at Army Emergency Relief, which they address privation issues for uh, military, their spouses, dependents, which was food, shelter, and clothing. And so it was so near and dear to my heart when I got out I noticed that there were disparities still in the veteran community that were really very similar to that of people that were serving on active duty. And so I just, I had a burden for it. I had done it for the last five years of, of my active duty time. And um, God just allowed me to just have the right people around me to where we were able to garner the resources to where now in Houston, we're able to address disparities and so we do a, a food drive in november we do about fifty thousand pounds of food and then in december we do a toy drive so the goal is always to give 50 families a 500 hundred dollar gift certificate uh, wow. for their children so that they can go out and, and 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 be able to have something for christmas so we initially started out i was doing it out of my pocket but the lord has uh, blessed me to where we get um, really large sums of money now from the government to where we can keep that vision going so we're honored, man, that we get a chance to just really uh, empower, encourage, and even edify uh, the veteran population. So let me ask you this then, because um, in, in addition to you being a recording artist, you're also in ministry at your church. You're the minister of music? or No, I'm actually, um, I'm, I serve as an artist in resident at the uh, Church Without Walls here in Houston, Texas with the uh, illustrious uh, Dr. Ralph Douglas West. Uh, didn't want to be Minister Music. <laughs> I've done it before. It's just that it's very hard to differentiate between industry and ministry and try to balance that whole piece. But if you come in as an artist and resident, you're there for once a month normally or special occasions. You're there for, for the special occasions, but you don't do the day-to-day -day staff meetings. You don't do Sunday mornings every week. You don't do midweek. You come in as an artist and resident. This is You're under his watch care but you use your talents and your gifts um, to just, you know, add to what the music department is already doing. We learned and something new today. We, we've been laboring <laughs> hard in the vineyard, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> when they are, look, when they, when, when they're like, you're going to be ministering. No, 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 no. <laughs> I did it, but, you know, I served. And, now, I love serving. Don't get me wrong. I, I've been a worship leader, a, a pastor worship and ministry for like 30 years. I did it for, in my 20s all the way up to my 50s. But when I hit that 55 range, I said, you know what? I got to slow it down. <laughs> <laughs> it's rough, man. Yeah. It's rough. Both Greg and I serve as Minister of Music at our, our, our local church. Oh, God bless y'all's heart. Yeah. And, and and we're past the 55 mark doing it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's going to keep you young. It's going to keep you young. Everybody, we are talking to Dr. Ernest Pugh right live. We're in the studio at Intercourt Live. When we return, we're going to talk to um, Dr. Q about his upcoming trip to Michigan and his recent number one single, God Wants to Heal You. We'll be right back. Featuring award-winning gospel artist Ernest Pugh. It's Ernest Pugh Live. Ernest, things about to be lit. Saturday, April 9th at 5 p.m. at 
Greater Bible Way Temple, 22 Madison Street in Jackson, Michigan. You got to get your tickets because they're going fast. They can't last. Tickets on sale now for $25. Don't miss this benefit concert for you for global health and social justice. Get your tickets now at youthforglobalhealth.com or call 248-703-7358. Get your tickets. Get your tickets now. Don't miss it. Welcome back to In the Studio at Intercourt Live. We are talking with a legend in gospel music. Legend. Yes. Over 20 years, Dr. Ernest Pugh. Now, Dr. Pugh, when I think of your songs like, rain on us, uh, <laughs> I need your glory, Holy Spirit. Your music has the ability to take uh, people into the presence of God. Tell us who Ernest Pugh is. And catch this from a worshiper's perspective. Oh, come on now. <laughs> well, you know, I'm that guy who I like to do like what the Indians do. You know, the way that the Indians knew that the enemy was always coming is they had their ear to the ground and the horses would let them know when the enemy was coming in. And as a worshiper, you know, we just always want to know when the presence of God, what is he saying in a particular season, in a particular dispensation of time, not just to do songs and catchy rhythms and catchy bands. What is the Lord saying at this time? My first experience was ever when we get to do Rain on us album, we were in an economic downturn. And I had got all my songs for that record. And I said, I just really need to speak to, we're in a dry season and we need God to just rain. We need him to provision. People are losing houses and jobs and cars and families. And that's when I first was like, I know I'm hearing God, but we had so many banging hits on there. They were like, you don't need any more songs. <laughs> I said, I'm telling you, God is still speaking. And as mm. one of us being obedient to God and just really saying, well, before we release it into the atmosphere, just put your signature of approval. He would not give me the okay to release the thing. And so when we finally listened to his voice, he then allowed us to release it to the masses and look what happened. So I vowed that Ernest Pugh as an artist, as a psalmist, as a worshiper, first of all, I fear God. And when you fear God and you understand that the eyes of the Lord are in every place, you are always cognizant that every step you take, every move you make, that God has to be involved in it. So that's who Ernest Pugh, the worshiper is. I really try my best to just articulate a message to the people on behalf of God. And you can't do that if you're not in his face. Yeah. In his instruction. So that's yeah. all right. Absolutely. So your, re your latest release, The Outpour Experience Live, features uh, your number one single, God Wants to Heal You. Tell us the story behind that song. Absolutely. Um, we released that record in 2020, actually, during the pandemic. And um, and did really, that's one of the two number ones we got off the record, because the latest single, Thank You So Much, is also on that Outpour Experience. But God Wants to Heal You was something I came down with um, with COVID real, real, real bad. Wow. Um, the, um, the, the fourth quarter of uh, 2020. And I mean, oxygen level of 70 on a ventilator mm -hmm. 10 days. The third day in the hospital, the guy on my right passed away and his oxygen level was in the 80s, mine's in the 70s. Wow. The fifth day, the uh, person on my left passed away, oxygen mm -hmm. level, doing much better than, uh, uh, you know, to me, I was doing much worse than they were. And God began to really deal with me about just speaking uh, the fact that he wishes above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul would prosper. And so God wants to heal you. You got to understand that this is a right. This is a privilege. This is something that he took care of on Calvary. And so when people who are afflicted understands that it ain't uh, that the sickness is not so much that the sickness is going to take you out. The sickness is something you may have to learn from. And so uh, you may have to learn how to hold on to God's promises. And when the enemy comes to you and talk about what he's going to do, you got to really come back and say, God wants to heal me. So I decree and declare that because he wants to heal me, I'm going to be here. And so it just became a ritual. And I just spoke it out of my mouth. Long story short, about after those 10 days, the doctors are still astonished. They call me every week. Mm -hmm. A miracle. And I believe it's because 
I just I spoke that affirmation. Yes. That I understand what my rights and privileges as a Christian. I understand what every stripe that he took meant. Yes. For my healing. And yes. so that's how God wants to heal you. And then of course after that we did thank you so much. Just because we're saying that things could have gone so many other different ways. The doctors came and said, according to the science, you shouldn't be here. According to the the, the, the statistics. If your oxygen level drop and instead of dropping it, we're supposed to take you off a ventilator, uh, or put you on a respirator, sedate you, or put you in an induced coma. You didn't go through none of that. Your 10th day, you was doing a, a, a oxygen treatment and walking mm. around singing in the hospital and worshiping. <laughs> so I had to put out that song called Thank You So Much because it's really an attitude of gratitude for the fact that I'm still here. Wow. wow man. What a blessing. What a yeah. blessing. Yeah, you're coming to Michigan. Hey, uh, <laughs> April the 9th, and you're going to be singing in a benefit concert for Youth for Global Health and Social Justice. What does this organization mean to you, and how did you partner with them? Well, I, I was blown away when I read what their vision statement was, that they want to do clean water and sanitation projects uh, for the world at large. And that just really blessed my heart because I have family in Flint, Michigan, and they dealt with a really bad crisis there. With Real the bad. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was just unprecedented. And so when I heard it, I was like, my family is there. Of course, we pray, but we got to do something in the natural. So when she said she wanted me to come and to be a part of it, I just told my team, I said, whatever you got to do to get my calendar to where I can be there uh, with them. I said, I want to be there and be a part of uh, what they do, what they're doing to address that issue in the community. That, that event is going to be on April the 9th. And that's going to be at Greater Bible Way Temple, 322 Madison Street in Jackson, Michigan. So we want to make sure all of our listeners, they can go to youthforglobalhealth.com to get tickets. That's youthforglobalhealth.com. We'll make sure that we post that um, uh, on awesome. the broadcast so those that want to attend can make sure that they um, can get tickets. Awesome. We're so excited. So, Greg, I'm, I'm going to flip the script a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Greg, <laughs> this is how we get along. So yesterday, I'm sitting around working on your interview, and this email comes in, and it says, Ernest Pugh, new single, God did it. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm listening, like, wait a minute. This is the guy that do rain on us. This is the guy <laughs> that do, I need your glory, Holy Spirit. Now he done come and got one of our Detroit songs, Greg. <laughs> I Ever told you I got a lot of guys to Detroit. And I'm like, he done with quartet on us. Yeah. Oh, wow. I Listen, love it. I Evelyn Tarantine uh, AG, I saw her at a concert that I came to years ago for uh, uh, Minister Latasha, who's one of the uh, sponsors that's bringing me. And her anointing was just so, I was like, this woman, yeah, and I've heard that song forever, but to watch her on a stage decades later and she still got that fire yes and i said yeah. i want that song man so believe it or not several months after that was over i was just playing around as my warm-up and this old lady came out and said you know you always doing all that praise and worship stuff why don't you go on and do some real church and i said i thought i was i thought i was doing something and we did it that night at the concert and the place just went crazy so i told my producer i said when we get ready to record the next record we are going to pay homage to evelyn tarantino yeah. it's, it's out it's out everywhere but the single will hit radio probably in a few months but when i tell you that's i was at triumph church in detroit about Four weeks ago for Ash Wednesday, we did it there. It took over my set. <laughs> Some about y'all Detroit folks and music. I don't know what it is. So you you <laughs> are gonna you are gonna do it on the night. Oh, right? absolutely, absolutely. I can't get off the stage without doing it now. Especially <laughs> the older uh, crowd. You know, my more seasoned. I don't like to say older. My more seasoned saints. They want that. Yeah. 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 So we we normally ask people that come on the show to sing a line of something. So I don't know if we want to do God wants to heal. <laughs> no, God did it. Oh, I wish I had my track. <laughs> but I, you know, that's one of these. Uh, everything that happened to me that was good. God did. God did. Well, everything that happened. 
To me, that was good. God did. God, God did it. it. What did he do? <laughs> y'all should have had the y'all should have had the keys ready, man. Oh, uh oh, uh oh. Hey, he's, he's in the studio. Oh, what you in? Pick me up, turn me around, place my feet on higher ground. Everything that happened to me that was good, God did. You got to get the record to get the record. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I, I'm, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going, I'm going to prophesy something real quick, Greg. I'm prophesizing a remix with Evelyn Turrentine AG. Oh, and Dr. Ernest View. <laughs> yes, that's, that's what I needed to have done when I came to Triumph Church. I was trying to get in touch with her to see could we do it. But I'm gonna bring her. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the video. So I'm that prophecy is gonna come to pass. I'm gonna come to Detroit and I'm gonna bring her in on that vamp and let her light us up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm bringing her in on that. I mean, she's the legend. She's she, she I is. stand on her shoulders. So I think to bring her in, it would just, I mean, that would just really be a Yeah, that would be the icing on the cake. You know I, what I'm saying? I, I so will be there with bells on You'll when that happens. It's going to come to pass. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, Dr. Pua, I was so honored to have you uh, uh, as, a, as a client here at Intercourt yeah, Studios a place. few years ago. Man, and I hope I hope that uh, that I can get you back. Well, I, I may I'm gonna be calling you because I think for this thing that I want to do with her, I want to do it there. So when this hangs up, I, if you still got my well, Latasha will connect us. That's right. where I'm gonna come and bring Evelyn if I can make it work. There you go. I come into town that Friday, so be ready. All right, then <laughs> I got you. I need about two hours in case <laughs> in case she starts shouting to make us go crazy. <laughs> We, we really appreciate this time uh, of you hanging out with us and just being with us. It, it has been amazing talking to Praise you, Dr. God. Peter. Praise God. Well, it won't be the last. Most definitely. If people want to contact you, if they want to download your music, they want to follow you on social media, how can I catch up with you? Uh, www.earnestview.com. Uh, and all of my platforms, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and even um, a TikTok, it's at Ernest Pugh. I've made it simple for you. And Ernest is spelled E-A-R-N-E-S-T. -E I love yep. that the hard way because I was trying to Google you and I kept going, I can't find <laughs> E-R-N-E-S-T. -E I don't know why they spelled it like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, thank you so much for stopping by. Um, again, we want to encourage everybody to uh, check you out in that great concert that's going to be on April the 9th. Uh, that's going to be for Youth for Global Health and Social Justice featuring Ernest Pugh. And that's going to be at Greater Bible Way Temple, 322 Madison Street, Jackson, Michigan. And if you want to purchase tickets, you can go to youthforglobalhealth.com. Thank you again, Dr. Pugh, for stopping by. We God really do appreciate it. Love y'all. Love you too. Right Now Praise TV on Roku TV and other digital platforms. Now accepting content. Send in your content now. Contact us at Right Now Praise Radio at gmail.com. Welcome back to Intercourt Live. I'm Greg Pearson. And I'm Carl B. Phillips. And our guest today on In the Studio Intercourt Live is Dr. Cheryl Simmons, founder of Youth for Global Health and Social Justice. It's an organization founded in 2017 by her with a mission to support young people as leaders who will work to ensure the availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for our global community and to promote open dialogue about social injustice that impacts the human rights to water for all. Welcome, Dr. Simmons. 
Why, thank you, thank you, all of Intercourt Live, Mr. Phillips, uh, my brother, Mr. Pearson, thank you so much for having me. It's an honor. Oh, wow. The honor is all ours. So tell us, what inspired you to create the Youth for Global Health and Social Justice? Uh, Youth for Global Health and Social Justice uh, probably brings out the public health passion in me. Uh, you know, I, I have a background in public health. Uh, I'm a biomedical engineer. Uh, so it, you know, I, I think my, um, my professions kind of clash together and then to have, uh, you know, a passion for young people that we have to all understand will lead our future. One of the things that um, I admired from um, reading the history behind why you started this, uh, you, you have a vision that includes traveling with the young people. Why is it important for young people to travel to different locations and then also have discussions around the need for water? Uh, I think um, before we take our young people uh, you know, out of the country to meet, you know, uh, their peers from other countries. Uh, then they go through a rigorous 10-month uh, training uh, um, titled uh, The Study of uh, the Biology of Water and Health. So they're prepared to have the conversation before they go. But when we take them to other countries and they have an opportunity to experience uh, other cultures and see up close and personal uh, exactly what they've read about the water crisis to be. And when we go to countries, uh, certainly on the continent of Africa, where uh, there's unprecedented poverty, uh, when our young people here talk about, um, you know, I don't have anything to eat, what they really are saying is what's in the refrigerator is not what I want. Um, when we, for example, took them to uh, Dakar, Senegal in 2019, uh, and I think even for me, you know, and I've, I've, I've traveled uh, to many places on the continent, uh, Senegal was probably the most difficult because we saw uh, poverty at unprecedented levels and the numbers of homeless children that we saw on the streets um, I, I don't think that I have enough words to tell you uh, how that impacted me, but just as important, if not more important, how that impacted our young people. Mm -hmm. So much so that they went back to our hotel and they started unpacking clothes and shoes that they brought with them wow. and initiated on their own to start passing uh, their own clothing out to these uh, uh, children that were on the street. They took some of their traveling money and for some it was not much. Uh, and they bought um, you know, little trinkets uh, or bottles of water to give to these children. That said to us that the learning was happening, that the awareness was taking place, uh, that you know their their empathy uh, and their passion that we were looking for that drives us through, um, you know, understanding what the water crisis is all about. If they had not traveled, they would not have gotten that. So, uh, to tell us about some of the other countries that you've uh, traveled to uh, with the organization. <laughs> Uh, okay, we've take, we've uh, we've traveled to, to Warsaw, Poland, uh, and we traveled on from uh, in Warsaw. Uh, some of our young people worked at the children's hospice there. Uh, another very very difficult thing for uh, for for the adults on the team uh, to experience when you're talking, uh, you know, hospice for babies. Uh, and we traveled on with them to Auschwitz, where they visited uh, the Jewish death camps and the concentration camps. Uh, total silence on the way back, just trying to absorb the enormity uh, of, of that devastation. Uh, we've taken them to, uh, to Cape Town, South Africa, uh, to Chile, uh, and uh, in Santiago, Chile, uh, La Farfana is... Uh, the water treatment facility that we use for a global model. Uh, it's the largest wastewater treatment facility in Latin America, servicing more than 1 million people a day. 
uh, and we selected them for our young people to study there because it also has built within it a biofactory. Uh, and that biofactory harvests the methane gas that powers that entire plant. Uh, so from a climate change perspective, absolutely, it's green energy. Uh, we've taken them to Dakar, Senegal, uh, and they're just, we have um, our site visit team is just leaving Ghana today. Uh, so we'll be going back as a, um, as a delegation from all of the countries uh, for two weeks in July. Well, bringing, bringing everything back home to the United States. Uh, so in support of all the things that you're doing throughout the world for the youth for global health and social justice, there is a benefit concert that you're doing on April 9th in Jackson, Michigan featuring the legendary gospel recording artist, Dr. Ernest Pugh. So tell us, how did your organization connect with Dr. Pugh to have him support this benefit concert? Uh, I met Dr. Pugh uh, a few years back uh, at, at another concert that he was uh, performing at. And uh, we just, uh, you know, had an opportunity to talk and his song, Rain On Us, uh, just really kind of stuck with us because it was water. Uh, so we continued to communicate over the years. And last year for World Water Day, uh, he was gracious enough to participate um, in a, uh, a workshop that we did with pastors and you know what their responsibilities were uh, for the world water crisis. Uh, he was absolutely phenomenal in that. So we've kept him close to heart so that he could continue to rain on us uh, as we move forward. Uh, you know, with the advocacy, um, you know, to bring a clean cup of water to every person around the world. So we thank him, thank him, thank him. If people want to purchase tickets or to support you, what is the website they can go to? If they go to www.youthforglobalhealth.com, uh, then the tickets are available there. Uh, and we certainly encourage people to get those tickets now. Um, you know, we are, are doing a wonderful job in, in selling the tickets. And we thank everybody who's already purchased tickets. And we're praying that the rest of you will continue to fill up that thousand seat facility. <laughs> <laughs> right. And you can see the, uh, the flyer is on your screen. Uh, mm -hmm. So be sure to go out and purchase your tickets and be there for uh, the concert because I will definitely be there. And I would love to see all of you there also to, to support this great organization and also see the great Dr. Ernest Pugh. So we're, we're so happy again that you came uh, by, uh, you stopped by Dr. Simmons to talk to us and we're not over yet. Uh, right after we come back, we're gonna, we're gonna hear a, and see a video from Dr. Ernest Pugh. God bless you all. Like this. Yeah. Ah. Listen. Everything that happened to me that was good, God did. What did? Yes, he did. Well, yes, he did. Well, everything that happened to me that was good, God did. What did? Yes, he did. Well, yes, he did. Listen. Kick me. Place my feet on higher ground And everything that happened to me that was good God did it You see that hey. Everything that happened to me that was good God did it You see that Well, everything that happened to me that was good God did it Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Guess what? Once we're lost in a world of sin, but Jesus came and took me in. And everything that happened to me. 
me that was good God did Yes he did I said God did Yes he did I said God did Yes he did I went to a doctor They couldn't heal me Went to a counselor They couldn't fail me interviews and what they talked about, the passion they have for the youth for global uh, health and social justice, man, Dr. Simmons and Dr. Pugh Phew. Right. learned a lot. Dr. Simmons, you know, I, that's, that's, that's my real good friend. I love her and uh, I really appreciate what she's doing uh, with the youth around the world. She just, she's always uh, in another country doing something. And uh, she's just she's just a phenomenal person, and we enjoyed uh, speaking with uh, Doctor Pugh. I'm a soldier in the Army of the Lord, but before he was in the Army of the Lord, he was in the Army. He was in the Army. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, you can support this great concert that Doctor Pugh, this great benefit concert. We're going to post a flyer, so make sure you um, support this great event that's going on April 9th. April 9th. And that's going to be in Jackson, Michigan. Yes. So again, the flyer is posted with information for how you can support and download tickets. This is a great event uh, for your support. And again, we uh, salute Dr. Simmons and we salute Dr. Ernest Pugh and we thank them for being a part of In the Studio at Intercourt Live. Yes, thank you so very much. Be sure to go to Youth for Global Health website or uh, and also uh, their Facebook page. The information is below uh, so you can be a uh, support to them. Once again, just a reminder, work like you don't need the money, love like you've never been hurt, and dance like no one's watching. <laughs>